Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick and welcome to the Sean McCormick channel. So it's just the Sean McCormick channel. I'm just going to use the Lightroom blog thing here for now. I haven't changed it. I'll change it. I'll get to it. Uh, so it's been a long day. Uh, shoot no friend's wedding, but we're not going to talk about stuff like that. We're going to talk about bracketing and specifically bracketing and setting it up on Fuji. The stuff about bracketing applies to any camera system, but I'm going to show you how to set it up on Fuji. So let's begin. All right, so I have no intro. I haven't done an intro, so hang on a second. Right, okay, there's our intro. All right, so bracketing is where you take a set of images at different sets of exposure. Now, the key is that it's exposure, and it doesn't actually matter which of the three exposure things that you use for the bracket. Uh, and there's, you can also do white balance bracketing. All right, so in terms of exposure, you could bracket your aperture so you could shoot like your middle proper exposure or what the meter says. And then you could have a stop up and a stop below or two stops up and two stops down. And that's called bracketing. So that is that you shoot a sequence of images. Now for it's useful for HDR, high dynamic range stuff, which of course you can do with merged HDR inside Lightroom. Uh, and of course, on top of that, then you can also do five or nine. And some people might do say nine one stop splits. And some people might do three with three stop splits and you know, and so on. People do different things. And um, so the most basic one that you would generally do is three. And so what you can do then is you can blend them together to create a HDR inside Lightroom. And then of course, the great thing is if there's bracketing in your camera, you can set it up so that it automatically takes the three shots or the seven shots or whatever at the exposure intervals that you want automatically with one button press. All right, and that's what bracketing is really, really useful for, to do the one button press. If you do it manually, we'd have to take an exposure and then go click, 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 one stop, click, 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 two stop, click, and do it. And if stuff is moving in the frame, uh, that means you can get more ghosting going on. So it's a good idea to do a single button press and it does the same images. And fortunately, you can do that on the Fuji X-T2 and it's really, really straightforward. Here's how we do it. So generally, when you go into the menu, you press menu and you're in IQ, you come down to so you press the out to get out there you get the camera icon and you go to drive setting you go into bracket setting and you go into bkt select bracket select and here you're going to make sure that it's on ae bracket okay now obviously there are other types of bracketing there such as iso and film and white balance and dynamic range and stuff like that uh, but here we want to go in and i'm going to select ae now we have two choices once we get inside the main section here which is frames and step setting and that is the amount of frames that you're taking so plus or minus with three frames. Uh, so that means that it's gonna go up in either direction and create three frames. You can go up in three frames or up in just two frames or down, or you can have it in plus or minus nine frames. So you have nine frames spread over. And then the next one here with the steps, that's the intervals, how many stops there are between each one. So you can have nine stops with a uh, or nine frames rather with two stop intervals and as you can see in the bottom that shows you the scale what it looks like how much dynamic range you're going to get so it's like that's 18 stops of dynamic range basically at that and if you go down to three stops that's like 27 uh, which is bananas and um, so most people normally would start off and they would do stuff with uh, three frames at two stop intervals and um, it's pretty straightforward and you could do three stop intervals but that can be a little bit too much for lightroom because the jump is too much and um, if you're doing that, you're better off, you know, going for five stops and maybe with one and a half step intervals or something like that. But in this case, here we're just going to set it for two, just roughly to show what it is. The next option is you've got one frame or continuous. One frame means that you click the button once and it goes back to the normal setting and it's no longer a bracket. Uh, or continuous means that every image is a sequence, basically. And then your sequence setting, you can change the order of the sequence setting. And um, so you can start off with uh, your base image and you can have the brighter image and then the darker image we can have the base one the minus and the plus and then obviously minus zero plus or you can go in reverse order so you can get the lightest one then the dark or the medium one then the darkest one the default one is this one here which is the dark one uh, the medium one and the light one and i go for that uh, because it means when i look at the sequence i know that the dark one is the first image in the set and so i've no doubt about which one is actually the first image so that is how you set it up. Just one point on that is that while you can bracket aperture uh, or ISO 
it's actually a good idea just to bracket shutter speed. The reason for that is that you want your depth of field to stay the same, realistically speaking, and you want your ISO to change or to stay the same. So you don't want the noise to increase as you change ISO. So the best thing to actually do for most landscapes and interiors and stuff like that is to bracket using shutter speed. Uh, it just means that you get that depth of field and fixed noise. That's it. That's the reason for doing it, basically. Now, obviously, with slower shutter speed, you're going to get mo like water motion and stuff like that, blurring and things like that. But, uh, you know, sometimes that looks really, really good and it's really, really worth doing. So, folks, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something where I've used this particular thing. I did a whole shoot uh, where I was doing this set of sequences for interiors. Uh, a lot of people don't know I shoot interiors, but it's on my commercial website, which is SeanMcPhoto.com. Um, you can check them along with the other commercial work that I shoot. Um, even though I shot a wedding today, uh, I don't normally shoot weddings. Uh, just as a favor. So, what I'm going to do is select these three images. You go up to Photo. You go to Photo Merge and select HDR. Now, if I hold down the Shift key, it'll actually do that without um, going through. So, you know, I'm just going to click HDR to bring up the actual dialog box. So, it'll now create a HDR preview. I have High the Ghost on. In this case here, although there's nothing actually moving in the shot, what's happening is that uh, there's different levels of brightness from the window, so it acts kind of like a bit of ghosting. So. Uh, I've already done this once as a test, um, so I know it's going to show a massive area of the ghosting, which is here and here. And this is based on, you know, the light changing around the window. So I'm going to click Merge. And it will do the photo merge. And so it's doing the full process rather than just that kind of, you know, preview kind of stuff. Just going to have some tea while I'm waiting. It's actually decaf tea because yeah, it's, uh, what? 10 past 11 at night here, kind of late. Um, and tea keeps me awake at night if I have tea after 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock. Although I have it after 3 or after 9 o'clock at weekends because I'm working until 3 o'clock in the morning, usually over the weekend. All right, so this is our HDR. And the great thing about it is that we have all of this kind of leeway and we can see that it's opened up all the shadows compared to the dark bit, which is pulling back some of that. I mean, it's still blown out here. You know, there's just too much of a range in that. I probably could have done it like more on this particular one. But that's giving me a reasonable range. I don't necessarily always want to see outside properly because, you know, outside this window is kind of ugly, you know. So that's the idea here. And here's the durability ghosting here. So and we have a little bit of what looks like. Oh, that's probably just in the tiles in the grout. So as you can see, that looks pretty cool. I'm happy enough with that. Bracketing was useful for that. Now, bracketing wasn't created for HDR. Bracketing came about when people would take their normal exposure, at least what the meter said was the right exposure. But then for safety, they would shoot a stop under or two stops under or a stop over or two stops over to have safety shots. That way, if they were shooting something that was really, really important, they had an opportunity to get the safety shots. So that even if they made a mistake on their guessing of their exposure, because obviously they couldn't preview it with film, they would have safety shots in either direction and that way they definitely got the shot that they wanted. But obviously, having the ability to do bracketing makes a massive difference to doing it for HDR. It just means that you literally click one button, boom, and you've got everything that you need, and then you just literally put them in like them and go, go, fix that, and it's done. It's even handier now, especially with cameras like Fuji, where you can literally hit a button. And in this case here, what you would need to do is you need to change from your S mode for single mode over to bracket BKT, and you're set up, and that's it. And then you're ready to go. You press the button once, and it fires the three shots. So, folks, hopefully you like that. If you do, give it a thumbs up. Yay! I have only a couple of subscribers. I got, I think, did we hit 100? I can't remember. So, I need to get up to 1,000, and I obviously need 4,000 hours of watch time. So, please do watch the video. Even just run it in the background when you're not really listening to it as well. Hopefully, that'll get the watch time up too. It may or may not. Yeah. People argue that, you know, Google know you're not watching it. But please do share it with your friends and all that kind of stuff. Stick it in Fuji groups and things like that. Or if you just have a general interest in bracketing, please feel free to ask any questions down below. You can do this on other cameras. You can do it on Nikon. You can do it on Canon, uh, Olympus. Yes, they all do it. Or generally, they all do it. So, folks, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.